Hello, I'm Matthew Wagner, and I'd like to introduce you to one of the videos that forms part of the video series that was taken from a series of podcasts that I produced a while ago, audio podcasts, which I've taken and I've converted them to a series of videos and enhanced them. So I do hope that you enjoy the video. Hi there, it's Matthew Wagner. Thank you for joining me for my podcast which is brought to you by panicattackrecovery.com. And I really appreciate you listening to these podcasts. If, if, if you've listened to more than one, and if you haven't, I would encourage you to do so. Um, I would also encourage you to sign up for my free and continuous newsletter about panic attacks, anxiety, and agoraphobia recovery. But today I'm expanding on something that I have spoken about in previous podcasts, and that's hypnosis. Uh, particularly... Um, self-hypnosis. I, I, I'm going to start by mentioning right at the outset that I'm not talking about some weird type of hypnosis, you know, where someone puts you under this spell and there's something to fear about, something to fear. But I'm talking about doing it yourself and just relaxation. Self-hypnosis really um, is akin to really just doing your own type of meditation, but it's not a complicated technique. Meditation can take, um, you know, good meditation sometimes can take you know, much practice to get good at. But with hypnosis, you can start to reap the benefits right away and you don't have to worry over stressing over technique. I've previously provided suggestions on how you could do self-hypnosis and induce the relaxation response. So I would encourage you to look back at uh, at the newsletter and uh, and get that information or feel free to subscribe to the newsletter and you'll you'll get that information in the uh, in the free and continuous series. So, what I really wanted to point out about hypnosis is that there are two things that I recommend. I recommend doing hypnosis to start out with panic attacks, but I also recommend, even if, say, you expand to your own technique of, say, meditation once you get better at being in the moment, I would still encourage you to always integrate hypnosis with it. So it's not something that you just simply need to start out with and then never do again. You can get very creative with hypnosis. Um, because really it's all about being in the moment. So what do I mean by that is being comfortable with the present moment, even if it's just for a short period of time. The reason I say that is because if you can get used to being relaxed even for a short period of time, you can learn to bring this into your day-to-day -day life, day -to -day life uh, more often and you can expand the uh, moments where you are relaxed and you can increase the duration of these periods. So. Eventually, you learn to integrate this into your day-to-day -day living, which is why hypnosis is effective because it's adaptable. The relaxation is adaptable from the hypnosis. So what I'm talking about is if you were to, say, do a daily hypnosis ritual of, say, 10 minutes a day before you go to bed or in the morning, or you could do it a couple times, um, maybe when you get up or in the evening or whenever you have a free, a free period of time, you will, of course, be relaxed while you're doing it. But also what I found, and in, in speaking to many others who have used hypnosis for anxiety, is that they find that they learn to bring this relaxation into their other activities and to vary the activity a little bit. So, for instance, let's say that you um, get a lunch hour at your work and you can go for a walk. Well, you might just sit down on a park bench and... Um, do a variation of hypnosis. Uh, so you don't need to, if you're worried about other people looking at you and seeing you with your eyes closed, you don't need to close your eyes. You just need to sit there and recover the mindset of when you were doing the hypnosis, um, you know, earlier in the day or the evening and just recover the relaxation. Now it's, it's really hard, I'll, I'll admit, to put this into words and to explain what I mean. So it's really a matter of starting to do the hypnosis and and then learning to translate the experience. It's sort of like uh, uh, riding a bike. I, it's kind of hard to explain how to do that, but once you start doing it, um, you know it's it's fairly easy. Um, it comes automatically, and that's really the idea with hypnosis too. Is that you learn to use hypnosis um, automatically, almost the relaxation. So um, again, I'm not talking about something really far out there or strange. There are particular um, hypnosis tracks that um, are very beneficial and they um, you don't need to buy these. And I, I really hope that you do give this a try. And uh, again, I've already given a free technique for doing your own sort of self-hypnosis. Um, 
And I hope that you um, hope that you will take this seriously. And the last thing I'll say is, like anything, if you just do it once or twice, um, you're not really going to notice a huge benefit. But done consistently over time, it can have a huge benefit. For more information on panic attack recovery, recovery from agoraphobia and anxiety, please visit my website at panicattackrecovery.com and sign up for my free and continuous newsletter. Thank you. The material in this newsletter is provided for educational and informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for a psychologist, psychiatrist, or other health care provider's consultation. Please consult a psychologist, psychiatrist, or appropriate health care provider about the applicability of any opinions or recommendations with respect to your own panic attacks, anxiety, and agoraphobia, or any other symptom or condition.